Welcome to the Octave tutorial number 6, Functions. In this video we'll be looking at putting together our own functions and using .m script files. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. Functions are a way of associating a name with a block of code. Generally the code in a function is for a specific purpose or to complete a certain task. Functions allow us to give them variables to work with as, as well as provide functionality for returning an answer once it's done. In Octave you can use functions to organize your Octave scripts and you will see how in a little bit. Functions follow roughly the same pattern as our control statements, however we've specified that it's a function with the function keyword. Then we specify a name of a variable we are going to return back as an answer for octave. And then we make that variable equal the function name. So here the function name is my func name. Then inside the brackets of our function we have our arguments. These can be a single variable or multiple variables that we want to give to our function to use. If you're finding this a little confusing, hopefully it should become clearer when we implement a function later. With Octave, we can define a function inside the Octave program, but more likely we'll create a function in its own file. For this we use .m files. Each function must have its own .m file. This allows us to reuse our function anytime we like within Octave. For example, if we had a function called mini, our corresponding m file would be mini.m. .m files are just text files that Octave reads when a function is called. We can quickly open our text editor from within Octave by using the edit command and then the name of the file that we want to open. For example, edit mini.m. Okay, let's make a minimum function. Octave already has one called min, but for learning purposes, let's make our own. The function needs to keep track of the lowest value in a vector and compare it to each element in the vector. So let's call the function mini.m or well, the function file mini.m. Okay, so we'll come over to Octave and we're going to use the edit command and we're going to open a file called mini.m. So if we hit enter and we get your default text editor. So mine's notepad++ and it gives us some padding with just some generated comments. So we can take that out and we can move our function to the top of the file. So we can get rid of these brackets around our ret, so our return variable, and we, it's going to equal our function name, which is called mini, which is the same as our file name, and we have our brackets. So in our brackets, we want to take a vector x, so we'll put an x variable. Now, now that we've got our x variable, we want to create our function, so we tab in one, and we're going to set our ret value, so return, it stands for our, our answer that we're going to send back to Octave. So ret equals x open circle brackets 1. So we want the first element inside the x vector. And the reason we do this is because we, we want to make sure that we return at least one of the answers from inside vector x, because the first element may actually be the smallest number. Okay, so now that we have our um, ret set to a value, we need to compare it to every other value inside the x vector. So let's do a for, uh, for loop. So for i equals 2 up to the length of x. So we're going from 2 because we've already got, we've already got 1 inside our return, so we don't need to compare it against itself. So up to length x, and now we comma, and then we indent one, once again. Okay, so inside here we're going to have an if statement. So if the x and then the element at x i, so at whatever element we're currently up to in the for loop, is less than the return value, then we're going to set the return value to equal x and the ith value of x. Now we're going to end this if and we're going to end the for and that then we have our end function there. So this is our function written. So we pass in a vector x, we set the f uh, return value to uh, the first element, then we go through every single element inside the x vector and check if it's less than the current return value. If it is, then we want to set the return value to be the lowest number that we found so far. Then once uh, the code finishes inside the function and it finishes this end function, 
that return value is sent back to Octave. Okay, so let's save this. So Control S, or you can File Save, and we'll just minimize it for now. Now back in Octave, we can call our mini function, but we need a vector to pass in first. So let's create a vector v. So v equals, and what we'll do is we'll just do random. So rand, and we want five values in one column. So it's a vector and we'll times that by 10. So this will give us a number between 0 and 10. So as you can see, our five values are 3.6, 9.4, 4.8, 5.34, and 3.25. So the lowest value that we have inside this vector is 3.2. So let's test our mini function to see if it's working correctly. So mini, so we just type the name of our function, open bracket and we pass in vector v and then we can hit enter and it will run. So as you see we get back our answer 3.25 which is indeed the lowest number in our vector. Okay so that's our first function written. So if we come back over to the slideshow here. Octave also supports multiple return values. This may be a new concept if you have not used a programming language that can return multiple values. This is great if you complete complete uh, if you can complete two tasks at the same time. Okay, let's create a different version of our minimum function that calculates the minimum and maximum. This is great because we can do both tasks tasks in the one loop. So let's create a minmax.m file for our function. Okay, so I'll come back over to uh, Octave, and I'm going to edit min max.m and it'll open it up in our default text editor. We can, re we can remove the uh, junk comments. And what we're going to do is we're going to be returning two different types, so we need the brackets this time. So we're going to return low which is a variable low, and we're going to return high, which is our variable high. And high is going to be our maximum number in the vector, and low is going to be our lowest number in the vector. And once again, this is going to take a value x, which is going to be a vector x. And now we can copy the code that we used earlier over to our min max. And we only need to make a few changes. So instead of return, so ret, we need low which is going to be equal to x1 and we need a high so high is equal to x1 as well okay now we're going to go through our for loop and it's going to be the same as before and instead of our if xi is less than uh, return it's going to be if it's less than low so our variable low if it is then low is going to be equal to xi. Now we're going to use our else if now. So else if xi is greater than high, comma, then we're going to set high to equal xi. And then we'll have our end. And now now this is our min max function done and what we do is we we calculate the minimum of a vector and the uh, max of a vector at the same time so we save this we can come back over to octave and let's give it a shot so we need two variables to store it into so to do this we open up our square brackets and let's save it into a and b so similar to what we're returning we have our a, a comma b equals min max and we'll give it our v vector so what's the maximum of our v vector it's 9.48 so we should get back uh, a equals uh, 3.25 and b equals 9.48 so if we hit run on this yep we get a equals 3.25 and b equals 9.48 so there we go we've com we completed two tasks in the one function all right, so we'll jump back to these slides. 
Now, Octave also provides some simple, uh, simple to use validation function, uh, functions that we, that can be used to, to error check inputs into our functions. So the nArg in, uh, variable stands for number of arguments in. It is built into Octave and stores the count of, uh, uh, the count of the number of arguments that have been passed into Octave or into your function. We can use this to check if a vector has actually been given to our min-max function. We can also use the isVector function that checks if a variable x is a vector. We can use this to make sure that we are trying to use a vector with our for loop. There is also the error function. This function stops the current function and tells Octave that an error occurred at this line, and then it prints the string that you give to it to the user. Like the error function, the usage function just prints out a string to the Octave window. So let's use the validation we learned to add error checking to our min-max function. We want to make sure that if the user of our function is, is informed of why the function didn't work. So let's edit our min-max function. So we'll come back over to our uh, notepad++ here. And we're going to do a check straight off at the start here. So if n arg in does not equal 1, comma, then we're going to tab in and we're going to use the usage function and we're going to type min max open bracket vector just to let the user know that they need to give a vector to this uh, function. And then we need an end onto that if. Now we need one more if which is going to surround all of our code. So we're going to have if is vector x, so the value that's passed in, because we definitely know that something's been passed in now, then we're going to run our code. So it is a vector, so we're going to run all of our code. So we can indent all of our code in uh, one, and we have our code done. So now we need our else. So if it's not a vector that's passed in, we want to tell uh, Octave that an error occurred. So error min max expects a vector. So this will be an error that gets printed out to the user. And then we're going to en end our original if. So if is a vector, run our code. If it's not a vector, print out an error message. And this is our error checking done. So if we save this and we go back over to Octave, we can give no values to our min-max. So if we just type min-max and expect it to do something, we get a uh, usage. So usage min-max expects a vector. Well, min-max vector. Okay, so we can then uh, say let's let's create a matrix so uh, let's make x equals open square bracket 1 space 2 uh, semicolon 3 4 close bracket so this is a matrix 1 2 3 4 so let's try giving this to our min max function so we're trying to give it x and as you can see we get error min max expects a vector so this will let the user know that they've, they're trying to give it something that's wrong. So you could even go one step further and check if it's a matrix. And if it is a matrix, tell them you're trying to give it a matrix, not a vector. But for now, this will do. And we can just check that it's all working. So if we try and give it V again, we should get back our 3.25 and our 9.4. So cool. It's all working correctly. So we'll jump back over to our slideshow. This concludes the Octave tutorial. Hopefully you now have the, still, uh, the skills to feel confident using Octave. I have plans for a machine learning series which will use Octave to implement the algorithms. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.